Last week, no demos. It's been a while, but Sultan is here today. So either there is a new conference or there is a demo. <laughs> Um, or something else. Oh, oh, you managed to get a, a, a hand on the .NET Foundation people, which I know really <laughs> you did. <laughs> that's that's actually the biggest news, yes. Uh, it's like it's, I did it. it was harder to get them than organizing the conference. It's great. <laughs> uh, but they are also volunteers, so fun. Yeah. What was I saying? Yes, so last week we looked at the 171 issue. Uh, still open. And we looked at the backport PR script in case we care about doing something like this. I don't think I've seen a PR to add something like this. Um, that page. Then, then 2023. Do we have demos? Uh -oh. I have a topic slash announcement. What's the fix? Workshops. What? Oh, workshops. workshops. It's yeah. been a while. Where's my volume? Also. Um, anything else? Mike, why, what do you have in your, in your uh, sleeve today? Nothing here. Oh, we can uh, we can always go through some PRs and talk about them, but I don't okay. have anything specific. Status. Orchard one. Nothing new. I saw some comments on some issues that we need to have on Thursday. Uh, what did go? Why did I say this one? I'm so confused. I should go on. So can this is a branch with my name. It's so confusing. Did they actually create a branch using my and why is it selected on my machine? I'm so confused. Or maybe I created a bridge, but it's a, what happened? Here? Uh, I didn't. Know. Didn't you import a patch file by that person? Um, so clever, yes. Zoltan. That's what we did on uh, Thursday, I think. Or last week to show how to. Ch yeah, maybe last week. Thank you. You watched the, the recording, right? You know what I think there? I think I create a PR for 1.7.1 1 .1 with those two yeah, uh, patches and you you merge them into 1.7. Okay, and this one was to show uh, how to cherry pick maybe something to, to one seven. Yeah, 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 it was just, okay, so we don't care about that. Okay, we'll see later. So, what did I say? Uh, in three. So many things. So I think I will need to again enter. Then three. Um, Jacques. As a contributor, what do we have here? Documentation, notification abstractions, so API docs. Then and we fix creating an advice notification tutorial. Fix. That's a nice fix. Important. Well, technically, everything in this tutorial is important. 
like if you don't grant that, then it doesn't work. So that's kind of important. But I should we should have missed this one. Add a project reference to the web application that points to the movie. At the same time, I don't really like this sentence. What does it mean? The web application that points to the module. And the project reference. Oh, the project reference points to the module. OK. I will say add the project reference to the module. So this is confusing. This is confusing me at least. Maybe I wrote it, it's possible, but this sentence is confusing me. Add the project reference to the application. I will like, okay, we need, okay, that points to me. Okay, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm just confused by myself. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna say in the web application, add the project reference to the module. It points to the module that way. And Kedox material. A fixed formulation and mean decoration bootstrap type through so much for it. Where are these values coming from? Those, I believe, for Bootstrap. <clears throat> yeah, I believe those are. Uh, there's a lot of small UI fixes that are coming up, but I believe those are. Uh, what Bootstrap uses by default. So this file is managed by hand, right? Like we control that. It's not generated. It's, it's what we want it to be. So you say you copied the properties from the stock files? Not all of them. <clears throat> Those are just for the validation. Uh, so that way it colors the, when there is an error, it shows you the field and it highlights it in red mm -hmm. and it shows an icon to the right of it, just like Bootstrap does. Do we have comments to explain how and when to modify them because like 375 why not 376 like it's a, like 75 plus 375 like it means something but i have no idea what it means yeah or where it's coming from like did you decide by yourself you know like when i look at this file and i want to fix something i'm like did you decide just it looks good and so just put it there or if you pick it from another file as a reference and then just mention that for the next program or for yourself because next week you will forget that. I already see. forgot. <laughs> see? You see? Or for me just to, to talk about it during the meeting. This is fine. This I understand and it is yeah. When there are magic values like that, I'm like, well, let me inform I almost want to do something like this. Just to see where did you steal it from? Not the only one. See them in ASP docs. And I have to be savvy. So must be something bootstrap CSS. Oh, okay. So that's coming from bootstrap CSS. 
bootstrap RTL CSS. Okay, bootstrap CSS. So it's copy pasted from a bootstrap CSS. And if so, that's weird. Maybe it should be a mixing or something, like say that one, yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, well, this is time select, but it's there multiple times. Human themselves, they don't have form select, please let it know. Uh, fix admin menu background color on smooth screen. I have no idea what it means. What is this one? Well, that's a variable, <clears throat> CSS variable we define and then we utilize. So that way, if someone wants to change that I one see. variable, they can change it in one place. So that is a Keyword to define a variable in CSS. No. No yeah, yeah, and then the second parameter is a fallback in case that oh, variable doesn't exist. Interesting. Front page in the same browser instead of open the front page in the same browser instead of a blank tab. And uh, we mentioned that during triage took us longer to talk about these value than the change. So Mike and yeah. it's also a, a shape. So we'll see a PR that oh. makes wraps us into a shape now. So and so if someone actually wants to change it, they can, but Okay. It's a blank by default. Or so the discussion. It, yeah. Same same tab is a default. I meant not blank. Yeah. So the discussion we had with Mike and Pierre during triage was that you might find an issue to suggest to have a, um, a property, a setting, to open the link that goes to the website from the admin in the same page because by default it was going on a different page. And so that would be a setting to change the behavior of this link. And my argument was, if we start doing that, why don't we add a setting to change the background color of the header or whatever? Okay, like let's change everything from a setting. One second. And uh, uh, yeah, because the only way to change that was to either write a theme and change the, the view or have a, a setting to do that. And so I suggested let's create a shape so that it's configurable in a custom theme and you can just change that if you want for your website to change the default target of that. So we don't have to, to, to add a setting. Adding a setting is easy. It's not the issue. The issue is about the fact that adding a setting for anything that any that anyone would want ever is risky. Because if we start doing that, then people will be like, oh, this link I want to open there or on the left or on the like where do we stop? Um, so we agreed that the current behavior was not common to open to force it to be open in, the, in a different tab and we said okay let's just default to opening in the local tab and if people want to open it in a different tab then they can just control click the link and it will open in a different tab that was the, the agreement and then apparently you did with see later implement it as a shape so we can just override this part without overriding the free without. Um, great, which can also then be done with some code. So if you want to implement some custom feature that will do that for you, 
then that's fine. So that's the journey. But if people think that we should add more settings or more things, feel free to say so. I believe that or things that make sense that could vary for most people that have a different view and is it's very limited to some places, right? But if it's cosmetic, plugins and scares me. Where do we stop when people create a PR to change something with a setting name? Um, By the way, did, did the icon uh, change as well with that? Because uh, the old icon or the current icon is uh, what the people usually use for links that open in the new tab? It's an, it wasn't an icon, I think it was the orchard. Uh, yeah, I don't logo. think we changed the icon, no. And, and I think what it means that is when we see in websites, like in Wikipedia, when you open a, a link, it shows a, an arrow to say it opens in a different window, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I just pasted that into the chat. Oh, thank uh, you. Into the thank chat. you. That would check. Uh, this thing, yeah. So yeah, here in this case, you had no visual cue for that. It was just yeah, the default icon. So yeah. So it now it follows that there is no cue that it will just go on the side, and if you want to control to that, that will happen. People will be confused at first. Because if they are used to getting it to open a different time, then now they will have to do control P. And some people will be like, oh, great, now it doesn't open a different page every time. Let's see. If there is a preference on the icon, either you submit a PR or send it and I'll I'll fix it. I think here the, the idea was that can I really keep it a page? Because I, I can just I'm looking at Bootstrap. Uh, I have Bootstrap font awesome icons. Uh, I don't see. There's this one. There are the references at the bottom. I think that's what you're. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I've seen that. Yeah, these things here. So yes, here, if I click without control click, no, it's just saying it's it's a different site. No, it means actually it's a different domain. That's what it means. Like you are quitting the website. You are leaving the current site. That's not opening a different tab, actually. They all open in the local tab. OK, yeah. good then. So I, I didn't know, actually. I, I'm now, now it feels obvious, but no, when I was seeing that, I was like, no, it's opening in a different time. No, it's everything is opening in the current time. And and we try to look into GitHub also, like the website. Where do we have links that go out, that go that open a different time by default? We could not find any. So it's like, yeah, it's a common behavior to open in the current time and let people decide when they want to open it in a different time. It seems so, right? Doesn't feel weird to open in the current time. Uh, so that's the behavior today. And if you don't agree, then you should comment on the issues that we try and we talk about them, which we do today. So feel free to comment. Fix publish little buttons. Right, okay. Warning instead of primary. So if you don't like the color. No, it's just for consistency with the rest of the colors that we implemented. Uh, and the buttons were like off. It, it was it didn't have the right grouping. Okay. So and yeah, it just looks more be better now. So why BTN group and then in Group because oh input plus button and this one here is just one button so no input group. Yep. Okay. I stopped doing bootstrap a few years ago when I stopped writing HTML. So I'm I'm 
Aynen öyle. Ömrü kurulu muhabbet uçak. Bendeki kurulu zilmi ve aşağımız kurulu zilmi ve aşağımız I hope one big will like this feature because I think one big I did the feature of that in Alchet Chrome. No, this is it's just the stylings, really the mm -hmm. functionality is still the same. So mm -hmm. after we uh migrated to Bootstrap 5.3, a lot of the views were looked at, some of them were changed uh, to adhere to the bootstrap, but some of them it, it's pretty much the same functionality. Where is the bootstrap at? So five three. How often do they ship in Russia? It's like every year in Russia, right? Uh, maybe less every two years because we started to make calls to new bootstrap. And I can't see any review version, so Previous V5. I've been started at V6, or they are just doing V5 improvements. Same thing. Maybe these are me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, bootstrap fine. Benchmark with net update. HTML sanitizing update. Microsoft identity web update. I'm in branding. In the zone. There is a zone, so I believe. So, what file is that? I mean, Brendan. So, the layout had a zone head meta, and now we're injecting this in the zone instead of at the top. The changes that we're injecting in the metadata, uh, the section instead of injecting it where the uh, branding, yep, where the branding goes. And it's deep. And it's deep. What does P mean? Padding end. Okay. It's new to me. Well, yeah, they they changed uh, left and right to start and end because it supports right to L. Oh, makes sense. So end is always the end, right? right? Whether it's your left, yep. And there is still the left and right, no? No, so PE is right. I mean, so right. I understand, yeah. but like it's this one is relative to RTL or LTR. Yes. Yep. Then they provide also an absolute one that says always from the right. Uh, you see what I mean? Like, I don't think so. I would have left one. I no, I want it to be on the right, even if you read from right to left to left. Okay. I mean, that's not a link. So, that's not a link, a new shape. That's a new shape that he created for that menu item. 
-hmm. That also has an impact on the localization. Because the source of the file now is a file you cannot play out. Something to add also in the in the release notes. Just file an issue to remember that this is a breaking change. Every new shape like this, because anyone who's done who's done a a custom theme like changing the the logo on the top left. We'll have to change this line. Now. We can add it, but I don't think it's a breaking change. It's, I mean, it's not. It's not going to break anyone because if you mm -hmm. if you create your own layout, then okay, you don't care okay. about this. Good, good point. Yeah, that's true. So it's not breaking. But yeah, I think I think I agree with you. It should be part of the release mention. notes. Yeah. Yep. It's an improvement, at least you can tell. Or make the PR more expressive, such that in the release notes with all the changes, we don't see admin navbar link. It's something that says something like new navbar link shape containing the blah, 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 blah. And this way in the release notes, it appears as a change set with a nice title, which people are reading the changes. Upgrade the team. Wow. Oh, yeah, because you did yep. the, the admin. Yep. So now oh. the theme also utilized Bootstrap 532. Okay. Uh, also, we, we brought the same improvement from the admin. So now you can use the same Bootstrap version for a front end theme and the back end theme. So it, it helps you in performance because now you don't have to worry about. Loading or caching two different libraries, it's the same library, that's for one. Second, the front end theme now also have a theme toggler. So you can go switch light theme, dark theme, and if you want to implement your own color, you know, you can also implement your own theme. Uh, and you can use that for the admin or you can use that for the theme. So the theme is is uh, also supports multi themes so is ultra the best at that cms it's the best if i i wouldn't i wouldn't be uh contributing if i thought otherwise well is it the best because you're contributing well it's because it, it, I, I am convinced it is the best. That's why I'm contributing. Sultan, you wanted to say something. I heard you. I just say that definitely it is the best. Yes, okay. uh, because it's also, Mike is also because you you contributed to it, right? <laughs> uh, yes, actually, I I have my personal investment too. That's the notification menu on the top. You have more done, blah, 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 and red, blah, blah, blah. You have done red. That's the same thing we already have. I just had to copy it over because I had to uh, change some okay. styling for the front end. I'm still trying to understand what it does. Yeah. Uh, more than. What is the, the word here? Notificate. Why? No, you can't do that. What does it say? You have more than zero unread. Because here you are injecting a word. That is translated, but you can't. 
you can't assume that in every language, translating yeah. this sentence means replacing one word in one place. Agreed. So, yeah. I think we talked about that at one point. Maybe. Well, but everything that is real, I'm like, why is it real? <laughs> what are we missing that makes you make things weird or makes make weird things? So yeah, and and what what is the goal here? What is the you have more than and you have because they're both plural, are they? I think we just need to instead of injecting notification for parameter one, we plural, should just type yeah. notification right there. Yep, and do a plural at this point here. Or just assume it's plural already because you yeah. have more than, so it would be plural. But you never know, maybe in some languages. It's a no, it's one thing, it doesn't need to, yeah, you do dot plural here, and this is the notification, yeah, so, yeah. But yeah, it, it needs to be on one line, everything. You can't inject localized into localized like this because the, the context might change how you want to inject or type the word notification. It's hard, but yeah. Okay. See, if we, if we can get you to <coughs> contribute more often, the CMS can be much better. I love it. My boss is the Right, CEO. Zoltan? <laughs> sure, yeah. he agrees. My contribution is to comment on your code. That's, that's what my contribution is. Just give everybody a hard time. And and maybe <laughs> one day we'll say stop contributing because ah, see myself, you are useless. And, oh. <laughs> it's sortable widgets. I remember that we tried it uh, two weeks ago. We talked about CSS stuff. Fixed it. Ah, I hate that. What are you doing? So crazy. So dangerous. This is uh just so you know, this has existed before. I just yeah. changed because the icon was broken. So I changed Sometimes the icon. you just need you just need to poke at something for me to see it, and then yeah, I'm seeing it. Like I, uh, so I, no, in this one is safe. It's done correctly, but it's dangerous to start. It looks ugly. Back. Yeah, I mean, when I see HTML row, I'm like, okay, what are you not encoding? But the only thing that you are not encoding here is already encoded after the fact. So that's okay. I just wanted to be sure there was no leaking data that was not encoding. Okay. Agreed. Windows, can it update your own host one? So this warning we used to display even when uh, we don't display roles for you to edit. So you can go and edit your own profile, but you always get to see that warning. And I believe that's something I did a while ago. And uh, now it's fixed. The exception, email task, no subject. So when you define a workflow, uh, you are not required to provide a subject, which is in itself a problem. But if that gets passed to the view, you're trying to trim a null value and you get the exception. So here we only trim if it's not null, just so I'm, we don't have an exception. I'm okay with that because the API here accepts a null value apparently. Otherwise, we should have never called the null value. But here it's fine to just say, okay, if it's null, subject is null. And that's where that 
there is a question mark there, there, but that was not one. Not, not here. Yeah, that's what I just changed mm -hmm. it because it made no sense. Or maybe what makes no sense is that there should, that should be none anywhere. What? No, so that's what I'm saying. So the workflow, when you define it, you, you shouldn't, like, it should be required for you to provide a values so you can mm -hmm. send the email. Otherwise, it's going to always fail, right? So, I know. you know, so we should be, but I mean, we, we don't require it. That's a different issue. When you say <laughs> it will always fail, you can send emails without subjects. That's fine. Well, yeah, but if you don't provide anything, right? Like if you don't if you don't provide who you want to send it to, oh, the other one, you're, yeah. you're gonna subject, fail. Subject should be fine. Yeah, but the rest of them, you know, like who you want to send to should be required. And right now we allow blank, which is this, you know. yeah. This one is the one I was mentioning actually. Is the the ugly thing the reject as part. Well. Widgets list part UI. Then you show the screenshot and make it stick. That's great. Awesome. Okay. Okay. We are done. Um, Zoltan. Yeah. Oh, workshops. So, sorry? I said workshops. I was right. Yeah. Yes, workshops. So uh, let me link to that in the chat. Uh, yeah, here it is, uh, discussion. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for, for showing. Uh, just something to chime in if you are interested, uh, whether as an attendee, although I, I would presume the people here uh, wouldn't be attendees, or somebody to give a workshop. Because as you may remember, we had workshops before uh, in 2020. There were a couple. Actually, there was there was more than one uh, uh, run of these workshops. Uh, I think at least two of them were uh, provided twice uh, about various as aspects of working with Orchard. So that included uh, all the built-in modules or the most important parts of the built-in modules and how to use them. Uh, theme development, module development, deploying to Azure, uh, Orchard Core Commerce, um probably other time i'm forgetting anyway uh what i think that these workshops were very useful very useful for the community and we should really do that often or at least periodically like twice a year to have something like six various workshops that people can sign up for um six different people uh giving them or well, uh, some can be given by by the same person too, and just have this as an easily accessible way of getting a bit personalized orchard training, because well, we have the tutorials and uh, and the videos currently. So if you want to learn on your own, uh, you can do that uh, from these or from the code. Uh, while if you want personalized training, you can get with touch with certain community members you can touch in, you can get in touch with Lombic and uh, get one but kind of in between uh, there's nothing so there are no uh, open uh, courses there are no class kind of classroom kind courses that you can just join sign up and uh, be there with multiple people so I think this would be quite useful yeah, well the turnout there was quite big so apparently people liked it and I think having these really periodically would uh, emphasize that, uh, well, uh, this is a community where you can get trained, even if you don't want a customized training, and even if you don't want to just watch online tutorials. So next step. Excellent. Sebastian um, doing doing a uh, a training. I, I if you have to train me on Bootstrap. I can't even do HTML anymore. Fine, you train me on something. I'll train you on something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can just just give workshops to each other. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, next steps. If should... you like to give a workshop, please please let me know uh, under the discussion. Uh, we from Lobby can give some. Uh, for sure. So uh, I think the last time I've given the, 
uh, module development part, uh, Gabor, who is also here, has given the theme development part, uh, or sorry, the built-in modules or something like that. Um, but well, uh, other people would be welcome, of course. Oh, now you own the commerce, so people in Yambik know the commerce. Who's the main developer? I forgot. Oh yeah, David is also here. Yeah, that would be. Oh, David, okay. So commerce, theming, obviously. Yeah, I think pretty much the the same kind of workshops would be useful still. Uh, of course, with updated content. Yeah, it's better if it's like on the schedule more than okay, let's do it once and it's wait three years to be the next one. Depends also on if there is if there is enough attendees, but from what you say apparently there could have been more. Uh, yep, yep. Awesome. Thank you for doing that. So anyone who wants workshop is interested can post a message and even more if you want to provide a workshop for people to attend. Um, so that then. Let's look at what's going on. Issues we tried. Did we try everything last week? I don't think so. We focused on one big issue last week. I love the discussion. It took a long time, but it took most of the triage, but it was interesting. Uh, the issue that we triage was this thing. My SQL issues with the index. Uh, the summary, I said, did, did anyone comment on my summary? Nope. Um, Is this so something what, we need to fix for 1.71 or no? Um, I think we said no. Did we? we did. Or, I, I don't, I forgot. It's assigned to 1.7, so probably yes. Uh, yes, we said it will depend on the implementation we do, but we, sh like we said we could do that in 1.7. Um, yeah, but that is going to be a fix in uh, yes. It doesn't matter. We can still update yes SQL and then link it in in one seven, ship it and then merge to main. So that to me it's the same kind of fix. So if there is a change in yes SQL, because we said that there are two options. So the issue here is that when we create an index in my SQL. Um, Depending on the collation of the index, um, we might have a, an index name or key, if you want, the value of the index that will go over 768 chars. Um, chars, okay, or 3072 bytes, something in this case for this collection. Maybe the fourth here is the byte four, which is four times that equals that. If we go over this number, then there is an exception. That's what they are saying. We are currently having exceptions in the migrations for MySQL, and that's why the functional tests are not passing um, for MySQL. And this changed because MySQL decided to change their default collection for indexing. That's why without any code change on uh, the part, uh, we, asked, we started having issues with the latest versions of uh, MySQL. And how it works, this, this is what I found interesting because I had no idea it worked like this, is when we create an index in MySQL, we say what are the fields to index. And each field here has, has a, a, a size, right? Like document ID is, is what? Is it maybe 26 charts, let's say. Uh, or is it a number? Maybe it's an integer, I don't remember. Alias, in our database, the alias property that we are indexing here, the alias column for this table, the, the alias part index table, is, what did we say? Something 2000, let's say 2000, okay? 
This one will be 26. This one is a Boolean, so it takes one, and this one takes one. So if you sum all the sizes that just mentioned, it's over 7, 768. It will fail. So, well, actually, we should not look at this code, but look at this code here. Yeah, here. Alias, we say create a table. Uh, so the table is created with 26 with the length of the content that we can have max and so on. So in the end, we have more than 768. So that fails. Yeah, because just the alias is 735. Um, so a solution only for MySQL, because the issue is only for MySQL, is that when we specify the name of the tape of the column, we say how much chars it should take from the value of the field to add to the index. So the index, the, the goal of the index is to be like a hash function or an identifier, a unique value that represents the content of the, the row. Um, and so you're taking the full value of the field is useful, but we can also just say, okay, takes the first n chars, like 123, such that there might be collisions between two index value, but it will still be, a, be able to help for performance. But there will be collisions, and that's fine because we can't index all the values we have to in this case. Um, so that's that's the solution to when when we set the when we specify the, the index, so this is creating a table. It's not the code that points to the, to the index, but if you look at the code to the index, it looks like this create index on this table that we just created before. <clears throat> and today we don't have this parenthesis argument. We, yes, SQL just takes the names of the fields that you want to put in the index, the name of the, the columns, the fields and things. But MySQL has a syntax that's if you provide a number here for finite um, values, like strings in this case, it will just pick up the first n chars. And this way, we can fit in 768. Even if alias contains two kilobytes of data, we can just say it takes the first 100 bytes, or 100 chars in this case, I believe it's chars, um, to be contained for the index here. So we can do that. And how it works in YesSQL is today, YesSQL, when it creates the statements, takes this string, this string, this string, this string, this string, and creates a SQL from this string. So if we put this code in Orchard today, it will work because MySQL will understand that. But the other databases won't understand that. They might even fail. So what we need to do here is if Current connection is MySQL, then use that. Otherwise, use that without the value here. That's the simplest fix we can do. The other way is to change a SQL to parse the thing, the colon here, and extract the parentheses when it's not MySQL. This is a change to Unia SQL then. And then in order to add the metadata, but we don't have to to decide what database it is. We can send it to all databases and then it's the format by definition, and MySQL will understand that, and the other providers will just remove it. The third option, which we won't do, because it's too much work, is to change a SQL to have a different model of arguments that will say the columns, and for each of them, another argument to say what's the size in it. But because all databases don't support that directly, we, we don't need to do it right now. Other databases will support custom functions, like you could inject alias and say convert the value to that thing, like whatever. So extracting a part of it will be a custom function. The number here is specific to MySQL, but other databases, they have custom functions or converters to, to manipulate the value of the indexing. So that's the issue. Oh, it was super interesting to understand how it works. Uh, so yeah, we can still ship it for 171, either with a change in SQL, which would be the best for Orchard, because there will be no code change almost for Orchard, just adding the limit that we want. So it's on, always under 7068. Um, SQL doesn't know, because SQL doesn't know the size of all these things. 
So it's up to the migration to say just pick up these numbers of uh, this number. Uh, oh yeah, we change the SQL or we don't change the SQL and we do an if. I'm not sure we can do that in option uh, in the migration. Probably we have to see how weird it is to say if the schema builder dialect is MySQL, then do that or now I do something else. So that's I really am not have that. That would be weird. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we you, try to you, not right? do that anywhere, right? So yeah. Yeah, so, that would be weird. We shouldn't worry about the connector. Okay. So if someone wants to change a SQL directly, that should be super easy. Uh here. I think I can I point you to the code here. There. The idea is that column names is the is the this array here of values. What we just need to do is for each value. In the MySQL command interpreter, override this one and just remove just remove by default remove the parentheses and in MySQL don't remove the parentheses like strip, trim, whatever. And that's it. And then the create index will have the parentheses, uh, each field with parentheses for MySQL and for the other ones that you cannot have it. And MySQL command interpreter. That's this one where we need override it because well we can strip it for everyone in the base one and and just have a custom one here that doesn't strip it. So that that should be the, the change to do. With a unit test in SQL to prove that it will fail without the thing and work with the thing because we already have some tests in uh, SQL to support that because it was an issue that being fixed by changing, by adding some validation at some point, but it depends on the collation and that change, so it can't apparently do all the checks we want. Um, good. So that there's a an issue I just want to get your intake on. That uh, the add a way to restart right at third one, third one from the top. Mm. We're trying. So, like for example, you know, we have I create a workflow that say that sends new users their password, right? I create new user, send them a temporary password or anything, right? And let's say they don't get that email. A way to be able to resend it by restarting the instance of that workflow. Is that is there an issue that I'm missing? That's a what? good suggestion. That's called resilience. Um, the same way there is resilience for HTTP requests. Like you could say, you could have a delegating handler on HTTP client to say, retry the request. If the request fail, retry the request three times and then fail, right? Or if the request takes more than one second, then fail, like a timeout. So all these rules there um, might also apply to workflow activities or workflow themselves. So maybe we could have some things like this, resilience. You'd have to be careful or to know when a workflow is idempotent. Like you could run it n times and if they all succeed, it actually doesn't matter. You know, like an update. If you do update a value to 10, if you run it 10 times, well, they will always be 10. If you, know, you can run it multiple you times, but you're talking about auto restarting, right? So in your, what, what do you, what, well, question is what do you need here and what can we do more globally? Because is it just a same name that you want to retry? Well, in this case, what I'm saying, we need to restart an instance of any instance, right? If we want to restart it for whatever reason, for example, if you want to send an email, but the email wasn't configured, it will fail. You go and configure that email, and you can come back here and hit restart and From then the it will restart. Yes. And then we'll restart it. It will understand that the email was sent this time around and it will succeed. 
but so but that's that's one example do, do you have all the input variables for the for the workflows yeah well everything is is stored in the state okay uh, the only thing we don't store is like content items so if we have a content item we just store the id okay. so we still have like if you restart it you have to go grab that uh, content item because you could potentially be using the workflow or the content of the item that's within question. your workflow yeah so if you actually yeah put i put a pr and 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 I address that as well, but I just didn't know if there is a reason not to have a restart function. If technically you can make it work in all cases, yeah, that's fine. If there are there are ways that it can't work because it's missing information, but specifically for the startup activity, right? Like the trigger, how do you ensure that? The thing that triggered, like the trigger itself, has all the arguments to restart again. They are all serialized and they are all available. If you say so, they are available, then that's fine. As far but, as I know, or if it's a big tested, hack, they are. If it's, if it's a hack, like, oh, I, I see the variable is named content item ID, so we need to load the content item, then that won't work. Because I, I would check the PR. Yeah. Yeah, there there is one concern actually in that PR that I wasn't sure if it's a proper way to do it, but I did it anyway because that's how I got it to work. So you see right there where you're looking, you see that right there, 104. That works when you fire the um, the content item on the fly. Like if you if you you say, hey, I want to trigger uh, this when a when a content item is published. What we do, we store an i content object in the input and mm -hmm. then we pass it along which mm -hmm. works great but in this case we don't we just store an id of the question. content yeah. right which is so, exactly so in this case we grab that content item from the um, content manager and then we add it to the input so that way any new workflow that or any steps in the workflow that needs it, they can grab it. Yeah, that's a hack. That's why I'm saying I say you hacked it to work when the event is supposed to get an eye contact. Yeah, so it is a hack, agreed, but it's in the implementation of the content activity itself. So it's part of the implementation of content okay. activity. Okay. Okay, that's better. So that's why so I could have put it in here, right, in the controller. It could make sense, but then the controller has to depend on content item, which I wasn't, I didn't feel is right. So that so, could be a, a different method on the activity, like restart or something. So it knows how to get back the state to be able to restart. So this way you you would invoke restart and then it will invoke get content tracing. Well, that's exactly what's happening now. Uh, From the controller, we 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 uh, we start the workflow, and then the workflow internally looks yeah, at that. I if will make like, it more explicit on the activity that this code will be in a different method. So some activities would implement it or not implemented because they don't need to do anything, but at least it will be obvious what's the goal here. But try catch. Oh, it failed, so let's try it because it's maybe a restart. No. It should explicitly invoke this code because it knows it's a restart. Your controller will invoke that. So you're thinking instead of putting that in the catch, put that in the controller? No, put that in a new method in the activity. And the interface changes. Activity will have an overridable method that is called restart or on restart, something like that. That lets it recreate the context. And then after you 
code you invoke the, the activity. And it will have all its context. This code will work because this will be provided by this code. Think about it. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I want to do. Just, just so that any activity now can override this new method if they need it. So this one will need it. So it will override this method and put the code there. You're basically asking for the workflow manager to have a new method. Exactly. Called restart. Restart. And then from yes. there. It will invoke each activity's restart to say, oh, you need to do something because it's not like a new Thing. You, may, you might need to rehydrate something from a previous run, right? So that's the idea. Got it. Let's see what Sitco also has to say. Maybe you know, you've seen that in earlier, but you, you've been in, so that's interesting to see. Okay, good, interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. But the same way we could think about what I was saying, like maybe you actually need, well, it's just a different activity. We can have retries for different activity, like put a retry on the send email. So if it fails, it will try three times with timer and things like this. Look at uh, Toby, just to have an idea of uh, what it does, all the things you could do. So a set of it's a library with a set of components to to provide resilience for HTTP client or HTTP request. But that's interesting to see what all the things you could do, and that will also apply to the workflow. We try timeout, um, edging, whatever, uh, like access. Uh, I believe we actually so use it in. Uh... In some HTTP clients, I think we are. Maybe, probably. Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, this is a good idea, but uh, the idea of that discussion was to manually yeah. start it. Sure. Yeah, so that's, yeah. yeah. That, that made me think about something else, but yeah, yeah. so try to, to deal with what I suggested. And this way, all their activities could be enhanced. And it will not be. It's not really a hack you did because you did it in the activity, so that's better. But then let's make it official to be able to restart. Sounds good. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank See you. On Thursday. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.